Let's take a look at sternocleidomastoideus on tiny woman. Sternocleidomastoideus extends from the mastoid, bone, mastoid process of the temporal bone down to the sternum and the clavicle, and we see it right here. This is this large muscle on either side of the neck. Here's the part that extends to the manubrium, and here's the part that extends to the clavicle. Sternocleidomastoideus, found on both sides, of course. Okay. Muscles of the trunk. The first muscle of the trunk would be the pectoralis muscles or muscle, and first we'll begin with pectoralis major. Here's pectoralis major, this large chest muscle. That is the superficial one. If you remove that, we will find pectoralis minor right here. Pectoralis minor is deep to pectoralis major. Um, next we have some intercostal muscles. Those intercostal muscles are found between the ribs. We have two sets. We have um, an internal set and an external set. So we have between each rib two muscles, internal intercostal and external in intercostal. The internals are medial, the externals are more lateral. So here's an internal, internal intercostal, internal intercostal, and so forth. External intercostal, external intercostal, external, and so forth. Next on the list we have serratus anterior. I'm going to remove his arm. Serratus anterior is named for its ser serrated appearance on the body. We can see this little serrated effect where the serratus anterior tucks under this muscle. If I move it to the other side and remove the arm, we'll be able to see the serratus anterior. Here is serratus anterior, right here, this muscle. Next we have latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi is found on the back. It's a very wide muscle. Here is the latissimus dorsi. Let me show you latissimus dorsi on a tiny woman. She has them on both sides. Here is latissimus dorsi. Here is latissimus dorsi. Very wide muscle found on the back. We also have a levator scapula muscle. Let me put the arm back on so we'll be able to uh, make sense out of the levator scapula. Here's the scapula, and here is the muscle that elevates the scapula and is uh, called levator scapula, right here. Makes sense, that would lift the scapula up. Next we have the trapezius muscle. Here is the trapezius muscle. All of this is the trapezius muscle. Let me show you the trapezius muscle on tiny woman. All of this and all of this. These are the traps right here. We have a couple of rhomboid muscles. Rhomboids are parallelogram shaped muscles. They're deep to trapezius. Here is rhomboid minor. Here is rhomboid major. Rhomboid minor is superior. Major is inferior. We have a representation of a series of muscles. This series of muscles right here is the erector spiny muscle groups or the sacrospinalis right there. Next we'll do the muscles of the abdomen. The muscles of the abdomen begin with the external oblique, the most, inf uh, the most su superficial muscle. It's this one right here. The fibers are running the way your fingers run in your jeans pocket. All of those fibers end in connective tissue which form a broad connective tissue sheet here called an aponeurosis, all this gray stuff. That aponeurosis is entitled or named the aponeurosis of the external oblique. Those connective tissue fibers, that sheet, that epineurosis comes over and attaches to a fibrous cord that runs from the xiphoid process all the way to the pubic bone. And that fibrous cord is called the linea alba. If we remove the epineurosis of the external oblique and the external oblique, we will see the internal oblique. The internal oblique fibers run perpendicular to the external oblique fibers. So here is the internal oblique. On the midline on either side, we see 
two parallel muscles, one here and one here. These are the rectus abdominis, and you can tell the rectus abdominis because they have tendinous intersections. That's the six pack we see in bodybuilders. It's really an eight pack. We have um, also an internal abdominal muscle. This is the deepest one of all called transverse abdominis and the fibers run transversely across the abdomen. The last one on the list is the diaphragm which you can get a hint of right here. The diaphragm, if I remove these organs, you'll be able to see the wall, the muscle wall, that divides the thoracic cavity from the uh, abdominal pelvic cavity. Let's see up under here. You see that uh, muscle wall right up in here. That is the diaphragm.